Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking here at a pre-calculus topic and a function that many of you have seen. It's this one right over here. It's called the reciprocal function. Informally, it's also called the rational function. And some, and even I, have a tendency to call this the hyperbolic function. But generally, the better name is the reciprocal function because it's a reciprocal of the x variable. When we're talking about the attributes, we're discussing what it is with regards to this function in terms of its appearance and in terms of its properties. The function looks like this, 1 over x. The very first noticeable property or attribute is that it is not continuous because if you want to trace this function entirely with your pen or your finger, you'd have to lift it off. You can trace it over here, but then you have to lift your finger or your pen off that board and trace the remainder part. So it's not a continuous function. So that's a, perhaps the most important thing. And the other one is that it has two asymptotes. There's a horizontal asymptote right over here, which is your y equals zero, the x-axis, the horizontal asymptote. It also has a vertical asymptote, VA, and this right here is the, the x equals zero, the y-axis. And remember, we're here referring only to this, the unmodified reciprocal function, which has not been translated or transformed in any way. Another thing is with regards to its domain, you can see in terms of the left to the right extent, the x-axis values, the domain is minus infinity coming up to zero, but not including zero, and then from zero jumping across your y-axis and going onward to infinity. That right there is your domain, and interestingly, the range is exactly the same. You will see it minus infinity to zero and then zero to infinity because the range is from down to up, the lowest to the highest extent. So you'll see that the domain and the range are very well. This right here is actually a true function. It is a true function and it will easily pass the vertical line test and it will pass the horizontal line test. So therefore this function can easily have an inverse. Now what would be the inverse? If f of x is equal to one or x, that is y is equal to one or x to demonstrate the inverse, you just have to switch the variables around. x is equal to one or y, and then you'd solve for the new y, and the y would still be equal to one or x. So what are we saying here? For this specific function, the function and its inverse are equal. They're equal. So this is a rare instance where you have a function and its inverse, which are exactly the same, and you've seen it right over here exactly the same that right there will bring us to the end of this first question but if you want to talk about verbally other attributes you can say it is a decreasing function from minus infinity to zero your function decreases think about it it's going from left to right it goes downwards but then also from zero to infinity again it's decreasing because it's going downwards in terms of its trend. So this is always in some way a decreasing function because the y values are always getting smaller as you go from left to right. See as you go from left to right it decreases but then as you jump across from left to right again the function is decreasing. Let's look at a second question for this video. Let's look at a good second question. We'll make this quite meaningful. We have f of x is equal to 1 over x, your reciprocal function. We have to demonstrate the trend that's seen for these domain values, x values of 0, 10, 100, 1000, and 1 million. And you know what we're talking about here. What is the output as you put in these values? If you look here at each of these x-axis values, you put them in your function, you're basically doing f of 0 would be 1 or 0, and you know it's undefined. But if you do f of 10, you're looking at 1 or 10, and that's 0.1. When you do f of 100, you're looking here at 1 or 100, which would be 0 0.01. And then when you know you're doing f of 1000, you're looking here at 1 or 1000, and that's a 0 0.001. You know all of these decimal values is not hard. Now let's just do 10 to the power 6 and keep it easy. We're looking here at 1 to 1 divided by 10 to the 6. You'll know what you're going to have in terms of decimals. You'll have this and I'll put it out for you. What happens if you were to put an infinity over here, an excessively large number, then you're putting f of infinity. You're really putting 1 divided by an increasingly large number. And essentially what will happen, everything here will become 0. Well, the trend I'm seeing is this. When you're putting an x-axis value of 0, you have an undefined. But as you start putting larger and larger x-axis values, your function starts to approach zero. And this right here is a very good concept of limit. You can understand this very well in terms of your graph. When x is equal to zero, you have a vertical asymptote. Your function is never touching it, but it's grazing it. And then 
as you become larger in terms of your x-axis value towards infinity, your function is approaching another asymptote, which is your horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, which is why as you increase the numbers, making them larger and larger, your function approaches in terms of x-axis value infinity, but in terms of y value, it approaches zero. Look at this reciprocal function. In terms of y values, it's coming here from a very large number to a zero. As you're going from left to right, you're essentially going from a very large number to a very small number at zero. And this undefined can be construed as being an infinity. One divided by zero, you can mathematically consider that as an infinity. You're going here from an infinity y value all the way across to a zero y value and that's exactly the effect of your reciprocal function. So let's just end the video with that but keep in mind the trend. For reciprocal functions as you put larger and larger values your function your entire function will zero out and that's a good term to remember zero out doesn't mean that you've made a zero in the denominator it means your function here will equal a zero it will become a zero thank you for watching have a nice day